Imagine a fighter jet built not to impress parades or consume billion dollar budgets, but to slip under radar screens, run on highways, and take off with almost no warning. Picture a country known for neutrality, creating an aircraft so adaptable and advanced that even superpowers start worrying. That is Sweden's Gripen E slash F. For years, it's been called the affordable fighter, the underdog, or the clever Scandinavian plane. But the latest engine upgrade being whispered about in defense circles has changed the stakes. This is no longer about a modest European multi-role. It's about a jet that could quietly shift the balance of aerial power. To understand why the Gripen E slash F is making people nervous, you have to understand Sweden's whole philosophy. Unlike the US or Russia, Sweden never had oceans of cash to pour into gigantic bases or mega aircraft. Instead, Swedish engineers went back to first principles. They asked, how do we defend ourselves with limited resources? How do we survive a surprise attack? Their answer was to design aircraft and tactics that could disperse, hide, and recover quickly. The Gripen family was born in the 1980s out of this mindset. It wasn't supposed to look like a flying palace. It was supposed to stay alive in the worst scenario. Those early Gripens could operate from 800 meter stretches of road. They could be refueled and rearmed by a handful of conscripts. They didn't need expensive hangars or pristine runways. This design DNA still flows through the Gripen E slash F. Even as avionics, radar, and weapons have been modernized, the core philosophy remains survivability through flexibility. That's why the Gripen has always been underrated. It looks simple, but it hides a system designed Bada for chaos. The latest E slash F version goes far beyond its predecessors. Think about electronic warfare suites rivaling anything on an F-35. Think about a cockpit designed around human factors and digital fusion making the pilot the center of a vast information network. Think about weapons integration ranging from meteor, long-range air-to-air missiles to precision anti-ship systems. And then think about the beating heart of any fighter jet, the engine. Originally, the Gripen C slash D used the General Electric F-404. It was solid, but a product of an earlier generation. When Saab moved to the Gripen E, they installed the more powerful F-414G, derived from the engines of US Navy Super Hornets. That alone gave the aircraft more thrust, better fuel management, and a stronger future upgrade path. But what's buzzing around defense forums today is something bigger. A potential next step engine program quietly underway in Sweden. According to multiple credible reports, this engine could produce more than 22,000 pounds of thrust enable true super cruise, supersonic flight, without afterburner, extend the aircraft's endurance, and prepare it for hybrid electric assist in the future. Why is that so significant? Because thrust isn't just speed, it's options. More thrust means quicker climbs, tighter evasive maneuvers, more flexibility carrying heavy weapons. It means you can take off from a short road strip with a full weapons load and still get airborne safely. Super Cruise, if achieved, allows the aircraft to fly supersonic without guzzling fuel or lighting up the sky with an afterburner's infrared bloom. That makes the plane harder to track, harder to intercept, and cheaper to operate. And endurance isn't just a pilot comfort issue. It determines how far you can patrol, how quickly you can redeploy, how much territory you can cover in a crisis. Now imagine a fighter designed to be cost-effective and rugged, suddenly taking on the performance traits of elite stealth fighters. That's what has military analysts from Ottawa to Canberra double-checking their spreadsheets. Smaller air forces might be able to afford the Gripen E slash F, where they can't afford an F-35 or a Su-57. They get much of the same performance for a fraction of the infrastructure burden. And that has geopolitical consequences. Take Brazil, which is already licensed producing the Gripen E. For Brazil, this isn't just about buying jets off a shelf. It's about building a domestic aerospace industry around a platform that can evolve. Other countries in Africa, Southeast Asia, and Eastern Europe are watching closely. They're calculating the costs of entry and realizing the Gripen could free them from dependence on any single superpower. 
at around $60 million per airframe, with operating costs dramatically lower than an F-35, the Gripen E-F becomes a tempting prospect. Beyond the numbers, there's the doctrine. The F-35 is built for a world of sprawling bases, high-tech maintenance hubs, and constant data uplinks. The Gripen E-F is built for a world of broken roads, disrupted supply lines, and contested skies. It can land on a stretch of highway, be refueled and rearmed in 10 minutes by a skeleton crew, and take off again before an enemy missile even finds it. Add a new high-thrust fuel-efficient engine to that, and you multiply its survivability. This is the essence of Sweden's distributed operations concept, spreading out your assets so no first strike can take the mace all out. Critics sometimes dismiss the grip hen as not stealth, but stealth is more than a paint job. Signature management includes heat, radar reflection, electronic emissions, and even flight patterns. A hybrid-ready engine could reduce infrared signature. Super crews could reduce radar warning time. Modern electronic warfare could blind enemy sensors long enough to slip past. In many scenarios, a Gripen E slash F with these upgrades would be stealthy enough to get the job done especially for nations not planning to start world wars but needing to defend their airspace credibly. Let's also be clear, no engine makes an aircraft invincible. Tactics, pilot training, support systems, and integration with drones and sensors matter just as much. But Sweden's approach creates a platform flexible enough to grow with those systems. When you buy Grapen, you're not buying a single frozen design. You're buying into an upgrade path a toolkit for national defense that can be adapted to your own terrain, infrastructure, and strategy. That's why NATO planners, defense magazines, and military think tanks keep referring to a Nordic model, not just in welfare but in warfare. Look at the potential strategic impact. Mid-sized nations like Canada or Australia could diversify their fleets, reducing reliance on U.S. platforms. Countries in contested regions could build mixed forces, a few stealth heavies for special missions, a larger fleet of agile Gripens for daily patrols and quick reaction alerts. This diffuses risk, complicates adversary targeting, and stretches defense dollars farther. In a world of rising tensions and limited budgets, that's an attractive formula. And then there's the psychological dimension. A fighter jet isn't only a machine, it's a symbol of sovereignty, technological competence, and deterrence. When a country fields a modern, high-performance aircraft designed to its own specifications, it signals independence. When dozens of countries do it, the global arms market tilts. The old big three suppliers lose their lock. Smaller suppliers gain influence. Strategic alliances shift. This is why superpowers are paying attention. If Gripen E-F's engine upgrade proves real, it's a warning shot. You no longer need to spend $100 million per plane and build megabases to get credible power projection. You can buy Swedish and get a jet that launches from a road, supercruises across your border, fires a long-range missile, and vanishes. The implications for regional balances in the Baltic, the Pacific, and even South America are profound. Imagine a near-future scenario. A crisis breaks out over a disputed island chain. The bigger power expects to cripple the smaller air force by striking its main air base. But the smaller country's grippins are already dispersed. They take off from multiple secret locations, refuel on roads, switch frequencies, and coordinate strikes using data links. Their new engines let them fly further, faster, with heavier loads, giving them a chance to deny the aggressor control of the air. It's not science fiction. It's what the grippin was built for. All of this stems from Sweden's original decision to go its own way. Instead of copying superpowers, it built a system aligned to its own geography, society, and values. That system produced an aircraft family now evolving into a global contender. And the new engine, with higher thrust, supercruise, fuel efficiency, and hybrid potential, could be the inflection point where the underdog starts rewriting the rules. Sometimes the biggest story in military technology isn't the flashy headline, but the quiet outlier. While everyone debates the F-35's costs or the Su-57's stealth coatings, the Gripen E-F is quietly demonstrating a new path. Rugged, modular, dispersed, affordable, and now potentially packing fifth-generation propulsion. 
It embodies the idea that brains can beat brawn in aerospace, just as in chess. This is why analysts from Washington to Beijing are watching closely. It's no longer about a single fighter jet or a single Navy vessel. It's about a mindset. Don't wait for someone else to save you. Don't copy a superpower's template. Build your own defense ecosystem that fits your terrain, huh? Your people and your, your politics. That's how a small country becomes a heavyweight player. And for other nations, Canada, Australia, Finland, Brazil, and beyond. Sweden's example is a loud wake-up call. You don't have to buy only from the biggest suppliers. You can co-develop, you can adapt, you can break the monopoly. This approach is why military think tanks and NATO strategists now talk about the Nordic model of defense technology. It's not just about social policy, it's about a way of fighting wars. Distributed, resilient, clever, cost-effective. It's about empowering pilots and engineers rather than just buying bragging rights. And that philosophy, embodied in the Grepen E slash F and its next generation engine, could ripple through global defense planning for decades to come. So when you hear about Sweden's Gripen E slash F and its rumored new engine, don't just think fighter jet. Think of it as a test case for a different kind of military power. One that values adaptability over brute force, independence over dependency, and agility over inertia. In a world where conflicts erupt unpredictably and budgets strain under pressure, that might be the true game changer. The story of Sweden's Gripen E slash F isn't just about a fighter jet. It's about a bold idea that smart design, adaptability, and relentless innovation can compete with the biggest defense programs on Earth. In a world where billion-dollar fighters dominate headlines, the Gripen proves that smaller nations can still push the limits of technology and strategy. Its new engine, advanced systems, and game-changing philosophy show us that the future of air combat might not belong only to superpowers, but also to those who dare to think differently. As global power shifts, we're all watching to see how this quiet revolution in the skies unfolds. If you enjoyed exploring the shocking truth behind the Gripen E slash F, don't stop here. Combat Tech Zone dives deep into the breakthroughs and controversies shaping tomorrow's battlefields. From stealth tech to next-gen propulsion. Hit that like button, share this video with friends who love aviation and defense, and subscribe to Combat Tech Zone so you never miss our next deep dive investigation. Your support helps us bring you more original, in-depth content on the weapons, tactics, and technologies redefining global power.